name is Ann Noonan. I'm on the Plymouth Arts Council, and I'm so glad you're joining us for the virtual awards ceremony for the 2021 Primavera Springtime Celebration of the Arts. Before we introduce our judge, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of information about Primavera. This is the 24th year that we are hosting this annual exhibit at the Plymouth Community Center. It is a juried art exhibit with the Plymouth Arts Council reviewing and accepting submissions. Participants include artists from Plymouth and surrounding communities, Minnetonka, Maple Grove, Excelsior, Prior Lake, and Minneapolis, to name a few. Artwork is made using various mediums, including oil, watercolor, acrylics, ceramics, photography, fiber art, steel, wood, and even plastic waste. In 2021, 82 adult entries and 28 high school student entries were accepted. Artwork is judged and nine awards are given out each year in student and adult categories. And we're so happy to have this year's judge, who is Craig Campbell, who I will introduce to you now and he can tell you a little bit more about himself. Thanks again for joining us. Hello, my name is Craig Campbell and I'm the judge this year for the Primavera Art Exhibition. We just finished the jurying and I'd like to talk a little bit about why I chose the pieces I chose and give you a little bit of my background. I've been in the arts for the last 40 years as a producing artist, selling my work and traveling around the country, um, making my living. Through that process, I've seen a lot of work, I've seen a lot of artists and have also taught in some of the local colleges here in Wisconsin. With that experience, I uh, come to this show to see what I think is some of the best work and the basis for that. I believe that the best artwork communicates visually. So no words are needed, um, not too much technology. And when you look at it, you have a, res you have a visceral response. I found some work in this show that fits that category. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that now. In the uh, category, the adult work, I'm gonna talk about the three um, pieces that are getting recognition and then one piece is getting the best in show. The first piece I wanna talk about is by Nadia Wexeth. It's a, it's a portrait of a young woman looking to the left and I saw it later, um, later today it went up and I have to say it really struck me as having real presence. There's some uh, design elements that are at work there, but mostly the ability of the artist to render the face and to create a space on that page that wants me to know more about it. I'm gonna refer to this way a number of times, but if I own that piece, it wouldn't be something you could walk by each day and not stop and look at it. She's looking off to the, to the left and you wanna know what's she looking at. There are also some purple lines across her face, obviously from another hidden light source, which also draws you in, makes you wanna know more about it. Second one is by Marie Haida. It's a, an acrylic painting, again, struck by it when I saw it passing the first time, few times around, I actually thought it was a photograph. Not because of the precision of the acrylic, but because of the way the paint was applied to the canvas and the imagery and design draws you into the space. And the first time I saw it, I had this sense of serenity and calmness. It's a picture of uh, a boat at a landing and a lake and a dock and some uh, shoreline flora and fauna. Sounds common enough, but the way it's rendered and the tones and colors used really create a sense that you can feel. The last one is a self-portrait that's ceramic. And it's done by um, Amy Fitzgerald. It's a small piece about this big Again, saw it, loved it, and connected with historical items that have the same sense about them. This piece is almost 
looks like it could be Mayan. It's a cross between a human form and an animal form, and yet not in a bizarre or a, a unbelievable way. The head is looking up a bit and has long, almost donkey-like ears. And I believe the process is Raku. For a small object, I thought it had some real striking weight. Not weight, but significance. Um, so those are the three pieces from the students that get awards of excellence. Now I'm moving on to the adults. The first piece is an unlikely, sort of an unlikely piece, but I kept coming back. I have to say, I walked the show probably 10 times and looked at each piece a number of times, took a break, come back and look at them again. And slowly, the pieces that are significant will sort of shift to the top for me in my brain. These are, these are pieces chosen from my criteria after looking at art for the last 40 years. I wish I had more awards, by the way. So the first piece is called Bluescape. It's a small painting, maybe that big. But coming back to it, it again draws me in to wonder about the depth of the color, some of the lines that are painted over, they're just barely visible. It triggers my imagination, which I would come back to over and over again. That piece could be five by five. It has that much power. The second one is a piece called um, Wires. It's a, it, it struck me as being a vignette from a dying town, a small dying town. And yet it's just a visual. It's, a, it's speaking to me in my own way. It's got a lot of uh, imagery on the left and then a lot of open space. The contrast between that open space and the, I think it's a water tower and some thin wires speaks to me of dying towns and how they're, they're on their last legs and this open space where nobody lives anymore is what used to be a town. The third one is a three-dimensional piece. We don't have too many three-dimensional pieces, but it's, it's certainly a piece that's done with uh, great ability and uh, a real fine craftsmanship. Uh, being a glass bloater, I'm quite familiar with craftsmanship and different materials. This piece is called Sado Voce, and it's a wood piece, large, undulating wood. And I've walked around it a number of times, and you want it, to, there's a sign that says don't touch. You want to touch it because it appeals to our sensual side, almost at a gut level. And coming back to it and coming back to it, you want to feel the shapes because we are tactile people. So that was three. So the uh, best in show I'm giving to a piece by Leah Makowski. It's a photograph. It's called Imagine a Day in His Shoes. That piece operates on two levels, and it took me to the, to the end of my judging to really decide on this. The first level, when you read the, uh, the title, Imagine a Day in His Shoes, is, um, for me, a little pretentious, but it's factual and you can understand the artist's perspective. The second level that it appeals to me is the design and texture in the, in the uh, print is really unparalleled. The colors in it are placed in a such a way that make it almost cut up into quadrants. The uh, eroding wall in the back waffles between um, destruction and this really rich textural surface. I just found a lot to continue to look at beyond the uh, title of the, the piece. So those are the pieces I st I've selected today. I hope you're happy with it. Remember that uh, if you're a working artist that has pieces in the show and didn't get an award or recognition, it's not because the work was bad or because it wasn't uh, professional enough. I would encourage you to work 
more, work for yourself. If I were to say, change the work in any way, a good friend of mine who taught for many years said, if you ever wonder about a two-dimensional work, a drawing or a painting, how you want to make it better, make the darkers dark, darker, make the darks darker and the lights lighter. Contrast, make them higher contrast. I saw some designs that were really exceptional, but the contrast was very muted. So I really encourage you to keep working, be happy with the work you're doing, look at lots of other work, and carry on. Thanks. Good evening. Um, I'm Jackie Frazzini. I'm a member of the Plymouth Arts Council. And I want to thank our judge, Craig Campbell, for his uh, remarks uh, about our winners tonight. We have two more awards that we uh, like to uh, give out every year at the end of Primavera. And we have uh, an award that's called the Myrna Kaner Award, which is a um, named after the charter member of the Plymouth Arts Council. She was an educator, and so we always like to give that to a student. This year, we have chosen Cherries in the Rain by Megan Schultz, who is a student at Wyzetta Senior High School. For our other award, which is given by the, uh, awarded by the Plymouth Arts Council, we like to choose a Plymouth resident to receive this award. And this year, the award is going to Addie Mosca, who, whose piece was called The Heart of a Clown. It's a sculpture made out of steel. We want to thank all of you for joining us this year for the uh, 24th annual Primavera Celebration of the Arts. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.